Okay, let's do this. Let's start felting. Uh, so I'm going to give a brief introduction to needle felting for the people that have not felted along before. Um, you guys have done it before, you know what you're doing. But in your beginner I need it all kits, you got one of these. And this contains the felting needles and a holder. So felting needles are long, sharp, barbed needles. They've got barbs at this end here that are quite dangerous. Please do not stab yourself. Always keep your hand away from where you're working. To make it easier to hold, you have got one of these. So the way this works is you've got a little insert in here. You can pull that out. There's a thin end and a fat end. You want to pop the needle over so that the hook is going to the thin end. And then you pop that back inside there. That allows you to hold one at a time. And when you're needle felting, you're stabbing up and down in a vertical motion. You're not bending the needle at all. You don't have to use this tool. You can just put this aside if you like and hold the needle like that. You can also hold multiple ones in your hands as well. So you can do one, two, three, as many as you like. So I'll just put them aside for the moment. So that is the needles. The next thing that you need is the fibre and the felt. So we're going to be felting onto pre-felt. That's this stuff here. So this is pure wool. It's been lightly felted commercially and you can felt onto it really easily and it'll shrink slightly as you're felting. Underneath this, I have my foam mat. So this is a thick foam mat. Really important to protect your surfaces and to aid in needle felting. So always do it on the mat. The wool that we're using is this. So this is pure Shetland tops. It's pure British wool. It's top, so it can be called roving. When you're working with this, there's a few um, hints and tips that are really useful. So this is the fibre that's come off of the sheep. It's been dyed, washed, and then brushed. So you can pull off the individual hairs in little amounts like that. When you're trying to get it off of the top, if you have your hands too close together, you're going to be pulling on either end, so it's not going to pull it off. If you have your any twist in it, it's also not going to pull it. So you want to have your hands nice and far apart and just gently pull one end and you'll get little bits off. And with needle felting, you'd be amazed how little you need to fill in the space. Less is always more in needle felting. That's a very brief introduction to needle felting. The best way to learn to needle felt is to just do it. So today we're going to needle felt this beautiful picture from Ashig Beach on Sky. So these hills here, they're the red coolins, which is why they're so dark and lovely. And that's what they look like at this time of year. It is wonderful. I used to walk that beach every single day and I do miss it. Um, can somebody please, uh, slight note, if I stop talking at any point and nobody can hear me, my microphones run out of batteries. So please somebody shout in the comments if you can't hear what I'm saying. But yeah, let's get started. So the way I build up my pictures is I work from the, essentially the back forward. So we're going to start with the sky here. So we're going to grab the lightest blue and just a really thin amount to start off with. And I'm just going to lay that down at the back there. I'm vaguely following the pattern that is drawn on the felt, but you really don't have to be too exact. And don't worry about going over the lines. So over lines is better than going inside the lines. Because the other thing that I forgot to mention is we've got our frame. So it needs to be bigger than the frame. So I'm just going to lay a little bit of blue down. And remember, I'm going up and down. I'm not bending or moving at all. I'm just filling in the area. So again, it is just the tiniest amount. We're going to essentially sketch out the design, getting all the colours in, and then go back over it and finish up at the end. 
We should hopefully get it done in an hour. There we go. And if I'm going too fast in the comments, please give me a shout. But I'm not felting it in too well at this point in time. So it can, as long as it's in, you're fine. The other thing for the beginner felters out there is that tonight we can do no wrong because it's felting, it's fun, and it's your expression. But if you're not happy with what you've done at any point, the joy of needle felting is that you can just pull it off at this stage and put it down again in a different place because nothing is yet fixed in. You will also note that you can pull this off because the needles are stabbing the fibres right the way through and into the mat as well. So you do want to pull it off every so often and just replace it. I'm getting less squinty as I go. We can do this. So I've got my blue down and this one has got quite a lot of white in the sky. I definitely want that going behind the hill. So I'm going to lay again wisps of white. And then you, again, when you're doing big areas like this, so there isn't much detail, you can have a couple of needles in your hand. That's a nice all over white. I'm going to put in one little dark cloud, I think. Well, darker cloud. Just there. Make sure that's up. There we go. So that is a very rough sky that we've got going on. And so again, so we're going to work from back to front. So this mountain has got two little hills on either side behind it. I'm going to pop those hills in first and then this mountain on top. This is Ben Nechalik, which is Old Lady Mountain, I think. So for the two dark hills at the back, we're going to take a mixture of the middle green and the dark green. Start middle green. I've gone colorblind. The <laughs> middle brown and the dark brown. <laughs> so let's start with the dark brown just at the top. And these hills are essentially running parallel behind the one behind Ben the Calic in the middle. So I'm gonna pop that down there just as a base. So I know I'm not gonna fill in this area. So I'm just going to swoosh that round and save a little bit of wool. And again, the same on this side. So I hope everybody's doing okay. Am I going too fast for anybody? And then on top of the dark brown, I'm going to pop in the light brown. Let that calm down. Ooh, I'm wandering off frame again. And again on that side as well. I hope you're all merrily stabbing along because we all know needle felting is incredibly relaxing. Stabbing something multiple times, who knew? Okay, I will work more on these hills in the background, but I want to get the big Ben, or not Ben, there was Ben the Calic, uh, shaded in first. So to get that lovely rounded top, and Ben Calic is a really rounded mountain, um, I'm just going to take a relatively thin bit, a little bit thicker than before, and use the fibres and just bend them in a circle like that, and then fix that down. And then pulling them out into the landscape in front as well. 
remember when I was doing this last time, it took me a couple of goes to get my mountain shape where I was happy with it. So don't worry if your mountain isn't perfect quite yet. You've got a lot of wiggle room. I'm going to fill in the brown right down to that line where the water comes. Even though we are going to go over that with a different colour, the greens in front and the darker browns, it's nice to have the base of the light brown there. I've seen already that that brown there in the back hills is starting to fade in too much on that edge. So I am going to just pull that light brown up and deal with that later. And again on that side, it's fading in too much for my liking. We've got a little bit of hill on the go there. I'm liking this. Popping in. Again, I'm just picking this up, putting more underneath and popping it back down in again. We are nothing if not slapdash. I like it. Okay, so we need to put a little bit more shadow and detail in here. And then we're going to start going forward to the water and the foreground green. So I'm going to take the lighter of the greens, more olivey green, and start just layering it down. So, so far, all the way I've been laying it down is very horizontal because that gives it a certain look. Later on, we'll smoosh it down in different ways. The way that you lay down the fibres does really have an effect on the way that they, the final look of the piece, which is quite fun. I've got a little bit of green in the foreground there. And now we're going to start getting really, really small wisps. So we've got a sort of thicker line of green and then wisps of green going further up and that just gives it some depth. We're also going to put a little bit of shadow along the left, the right. This is backwards for me. So this is my right and my left. So on my right side, I'm going to smoosh it up this time and to put a little bit of shadow coming down one side of the Ben. Because on Ben the Calic there is a slight indent on that side there. I think in a minute I'm going to build it up a little bit higher because it's starting to sink. But that's okay. Going to take this opportunity just now to just peel this off the back and pop it back down again. So we've got our green in the foreground, but there is a shadow by the water and there's a shadow coming along to this side. So this little shadow here is actually sort of lower Breckish going into Broadford which is one of the towns on Sky, but I, instead of trying to do houses, I've just done a sort of dark shadow to show where the town is, or town, village. I'm going to start putting in a little bit of shadow just under there, although the water will overlap it to a certain extent, but that's okay. I want to put my, before I go any further, oh, I'm going to straighten up and make my hill a little bit higher because it's not quite standing out as much as I want it to. It got squished, shall we say. I'm 
And you can let it go over the green again, that's totally fine. That's a bit of a better height. And we'll blend that in. The more you stab it as well, the more the colours will pull in together. Which is really fun. So the hills don't look terribly exciting just now, but that's okay. They don't need to be finished yet. I am going to pop and get some water and foreground in before I go much further because it is at the moment just sketching out and you want to get the whole idea of the picture before you get too fixed on any one part of it. So I've got my green going down there and then it goes into sort of foresty and a little bit of shorefront round there. So for the foresty bit I'm going to take the dark green and this time again, I'm uh, scrumfling, I believe is the technical term. Scrumfling up and popping that in there, going out to the side. I'm also going to put a bit of the dark brown in as well to give it some shadow. So I'm aiming more underneath than on top of the dark. The shadows would naturally be under the trees and I can even put a little bit of highlight in the lighter green on top. And if anybody wants me to go over anything that I have said so far please give me a shout in the comments and if anybody can hear me say hello just to make sure I'm still being Last bit again. So is that last bit the forest here or this bit? <laughs> so the, should we say forest or shorefront? Forest, excellent. I'll do it right from the beginning again. So for the foresty bit here, I've taken the forest green rather than the olive green and smooshed up the fibres to give them a bit of shape and texture. Very gently popped that in and before it's belted in at all really I've taken the dark brown, smooshed that at the bottom of it and the light olive green, again tiny bits, and smooshed that at the top side. So I've got a shadow essentially underneath and a little bit of highlight on top. And then felted that in. We are going to define this more later on as well. So this is just getting colour blocking that little bit of forest in. There we go, so we've got colour blocked forest. So remember at this stage it will look very colour blocky and don't panic. We're going to start a little bit more closer shore front, so I'm going to go for the lighter olive green. And pop that in. So here I've folded it over, it gives a nice curve and I can use, and I can use that curve as the shoreline there. Pull that a little bit further. There we go. And this one, we're going to do <laughs> kind of the reverse of what I did up the top for the forest. The main body is the olive. And we're going to take a little bit of the forest green, the darker green, and just pop that at the bottom to give it a shadow. Because shadows aren't always black, they can be darker colours of the same. So that little green at the bottom, and I'm going to let it go up in different places as well, will be the shadow for the bit closer to us. You can also put a little bit of the darker green in a thin line right at the bottom. So 
we are going to have our little stream going there. So that's my two little shore fronts blocked out. And now I'm going to work on this big bit of sea. So with the sea with this one, it is quite, it's quite a dark sea. It's got lots of shadows and ripples in it. So we are going to go for the darker blue and just going around the edges and the side. Just so we want a darker base rather than the lighter base of the sky. But don't worry, we're going to go on top of it with lighter colours. But that'll give it a nice dark base to work from. So I'm just, I am, I'm not bending the needle, but I am using the needle to move the fibres a little bit, as long as when you're going and stabbing, you're still stabbing straight up and down. There we go, that's going around the corner there. And a little bit up. So I've got a little stream coming there. I'm going to put the base of the stream coming out there. And then going round a little bit lighter down at the bottom there. So that is my water blocked in. Be a little bit more. I'm really excited to see all of your, I really enjoyed in fact, all the finished landscapes I saw last time and I can't wait to see them again on the Facebook group or through email. I really enjoy seeing what you guys have done and I'm so proud of all of you. So now I'm going to take the sky blue and so it's still quite a thin bit and I'm pulling it open so it starts to, you can, hopefully you can see this, it starts to sort of concertina out a wee bit. And I'm going to lay that very horizontal over the water there, kind of keeping it slightly away from the edge. You can see that starting to look like little ripples and waves with the colour behind it. Needle felting can be quite hard work on the arms and the wrists, so if you ever need to take a break, just have a quick break, have a stop, have a cup of tea, do the important things. Don't go if it's starting to be painful. And it's also really good to step back from your work. Hold it up. In fact, I'm going to do that. Not yet. Once I put that there, I'm going to step back, hold it up and see how it's looking. Pop it in the frame. I've got a nice little thin base of the blue but I'm going to add even more on top of this so I'm going to get some white and really not much this time. Thin 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 amount of the white on top. I'm definitely keeping it horizontal this time still. Because those waves, in, in my head, those waves are coming that way and going onto that shore. There you go. So that's starting to look like water to me, I reckon. Now, once we get this sand in, we will start to work on details and start refining it. So let's get some sand in. So I'm going to start with just a small amount of the yellow. <laughs> I'm having trouble here because I'm holding both ends. <laughs> so I'm going to, because it is quite a small bit, I'm going to pull it off that way. Open that up and then make that little half moon shape at the bottom. I 
And we are going to get some white coming out of there as well, but we'll do that in a minute. So I've got my bright yellow. If you want a very sandy beach, you can leave it with bright yellow. But I like to add in some white on top. Because Ashig Beach, it is one of those beaches that if you get it on a good day, it's so white. It's... little bit more I think but it does also have seaweed all over it so we're gonna pop in some seaweed as well there we go so I'm keeping the white closer and letting it go a little bit yellow nearer to the water because it would if the tide is going out that bit nearer the water will be slightly darker than the rest of the sand we're also going to put some white little waves lapping that's the word i'm looking for lapping the shore so we'll take the white again and just draw a line keeping so i left my darker yellow there keeping back a little bit from that but putting a little bit more solid white there and i'm going to let that white Come up and go into the stream that's coming down as well. So that brings the edge nicely in. Gonna pop a little bit there. Now for the seaweed, taking this lovely brown again, I'm using this brown a lot at the moment, and I've done little seaweed balls. You don't have to. You can do the seaweed any way you like. You can lay it out in little straggles, little lines. I'm going to do a couple of little balls. I'm taking the tiniest, tiniest amount, scrumpling it up a little bit in my hand and then laying it down. If you don't want to felt this in too much, you can leave it so little bits are poofing out of it. And that's a really nice effect. You obviously want to felt your project reasonably well so it stays solid. But there are bits that you can leave relatively unfelted. And that gives it a nice bit of texture. So I was always taught that in nature nothing comes in pairs. You always want to make it an uneven number. I'm going to do three little bits of seaweed. Now these bits of seaweed may disappear when I put the frame on but that's totally fine. I'll just shift them. Okay so everything is colour blocked in. We're about well we're halfway through the time I reckon and we're about halfway through the design. So I'm going to take this off and I'm going to hold it up and have a look at it. So I'm pretty happy with how it's looking, how the shapes are taking form. I want to work in and do a couple of areas. I'm also going to do this. So I'm going to take the frame and I've unscrewed the top there. I'm not doing this on the mat, I'm doing this on a hard surface. I'm going to pop the frame just underneath there and then lay that on top and see how it goes. So that's what will be in my final picture. And I'm pretty happy with that layout. Yeah, let's keep felting. Give me a shout how you're gonna, yours are doing. Anybody at the same stage as me? Anybody flown past me? Anybody panicking and trying to run away? So while I'm waiting for comments, I'm going to work on my hills a little bit more. So for this hill here, I've put in a couple of highlights as well. And I've made the greens, the greens up and I'm going to put a little bit more dark in. So we're going to start with the dark. And I'm going to pull that down there and pull that hill down. 
re-put in some of the lights but making sure so for this area making sure that the edge is against darkness so that it gives it a sense of depth and I'm going to take a tiny tiny amount of the yellow tiny tiny amount and pop that just near the top of the hill this is a really small amount and that just gives it a little glint there we go perfect and again i'm going to do the same to the big mountain now i know the big mountain needs not as filtered in as the rest of it so i'm going to give him a little going over before I do anything else to him. Her, sorry, it's been the calic. Or as the story goes, there is a queen buried at the top of Ben the Calic called Saucy Mary. She was a Norwegian queen and she wanted to be buried so she could feel the wind from Norway blowing over her grave. So she was buried at the top of Ben the Calic, and there's a wee cairn at the top there that is claims that's where she's buried. Although to make things confusing, there are two Ben the Calics on Sky quite close to each other. So who knows which one? So I'm putting a little bit of darker brown on that side of the hill, working it down working a little bit more into that side there I'm going to get my lighter brown back onto that side because that's a dark blob at the moment but as soon as I put so I'm making sure to miss out where it touches the foreground mountains just that top corner there And then the touch of yellow again on the very top just to give it a few little highlights oh guys i'm sure <laughs> i mean i just read all your comments i am sure it is looking wonderful at this point in time, it will look a bit messy. Do not panic. As long as you've got the basic shapes in, we've got plenty of time to go over and change stuff. And remember, you can pull them off and start again if you want to. You do not have to leave it if you don't like it. So you can, even at this stage, you can pull off quite an amazing amount. And if it is causing real issues pulling it off, you can pull it off to a certain extent and then just snip it with scissors. But I didn't tell you that. Thank you, Donna. Oh, I'm squinty. There we go. So I've got my little highlights. So looking, I need a bit more brown on that side there. And this video will be left up. Um, I'll adjust the thumbnail and edit all the title again so it's the proper felt along title so you can immediately immediately as soon as i'm finished start it again and you can watch me doing it again in case you missed anything and i will be editing it down to another 10 minute video that sort of speed run of how to felt this that's better so i need a little bit more yellow again So there's no panic to keep up with me. Especially not when I'm doing my speed run and I speed up the felting part to about three times as fast as I'm doing it just now. Looks like I felt really fast. So I'm going to put some yellow highlights in this mountain. Oh, far too much. Oh, now 
again way way too much I'm just going to gently pull it out a wee bit there we go so it, even though it is disappearing in quite a lot there's just little flecks of it and in this foreground here as well I'm going to start going in with a little bit more yellow so in this bit here where the where Broadford and Breckish are I'm going to start putting in tiny bits of yellow because at this time of year we haven't really got much green up there it's still got its not necessarily got snow but it's got its winter coat still on and if you have put in a little bit too much yellow and you don't want to pull it off you can add more on top of a different colour so this brown on top and that smooths it out a little bit there we go and this green I think is a little bit too high up the mountain I'm going to pull it down a tad so I can either pull it off or I can pull it slightly and shift it there we go so if you if you've got some quite horizontal lines here that you're not happy with but you like the color you can pull it up and then move it so that it the web that you've essentially so this has created a little web of fibers and you can move them and that's a really nice effect so it's like a thin smattering of fiber just over the area so I'm going to spend a couple of minutes now and just really felt over the mountain with three needles to see how it's looking once it's been felted in because it does change quite a lot when you're properly felted it down and this is a proper workout wonky I'm always wonky one day I'll tape this down so again I'm going to put a little bit more dark brown because I've just got a wee gap there oops that I didn't spot there we go so just to go over the hills one more time the hill is basically a U shape of the light brown and the two on either side have dark the dark brown where it touches the U shape going to light brown with a touch of yellow the further away from that line there and there that you go so that creates a nice little fade and then this foreground here goes from the the chestnutty brown down to green but then down to excellent Michael and then it goes to the dark brown so I'm relatively happy with the hill at the moment I think I love that little lighter section there that just gives a wee, a wee effect of another mini hill on the hill because hills aren't perfectly smooth they will have lighter bits and darker bits where there's rocks and gullies and crevices so you can get again tiny tiny amounts of a dark color to create some texture because we like texture okay so i'm going to start working on these fluffy trees now because they're a fluffy mess at the moment so I'm going to start just by felting them in a bit more and seeing what they need. I've got my three needles for epic fast felting, so I've missed a huge gap there. 
which is exciting. So I'm going to pop some. I think I want to put the blue right up to that little hole there. There we go, that's a bit better. Less of a gap. And then I'm going to work on this. So what do I need with the forest? I don't like the angle that that's going at. I wanted to have a more flatter base. So I'm going to pop you up a little bit. Maybe even... There we go. So I love the fact, so this is one of my favourite things, I've said this a couple of times already, favourite things about felting is that you can just squish it around. You can't, well, you can do this with oil paint to a certain extent, but you can't do this with like watercolour or anything. Felting is such a forgiving material to work with. So I'm also, you can, although I said always be horizontal, you can go in at this angle as well if you want to start shifting stuff gently but you're still going up and down, you're not bending the needle at all. So I'm going to pull that up a wee bit. There you go, that's starting to look a lot more forest-like. I'm just going to quickly double check how, mu how much of this is actually going to be in the frame is the question. Yeah, a good amount. Perfect. And I think I want to put just the tiniest amounts. Do I want to put brown in it? Yeah, let's put a little bit of brown in it. Because this this field, this field is a field I'm vaguely scared of. Um, because lots of cows live there. And when the, the young males are in... They're very inquisitive and they will come just have a, like in a friendly way, they'll come quite close and be quite interested. So these little darker areas are where the cows have been walking. And even though I know they're just being friendly, when a very large, young and excitable cow comes towards you, it is slightly intimidating. little bit more dark, a little bit more brown. Now that I put the brown in, I want to put loads of it in. And like here, you can't quite see it, but from my angle, this is, I've been working on this area a little bit, so it's quite dipped in. So that tells me that I need to pull it off because it has been a while since I pulled it off. And look at the back. How fun is that? There you go. And at this point as well, so when you pull it off, it's still quite movable. So you can give it a good, a good smoosh down, smooth it off a little bit, find, see if there's any rough bits, any bits that aren't felted in well enough for your liking. And then give it another go. So I can see that I've missed this water line there with the dark blue. And I also want to put a little bit more light blue coming up into there. Just letting that go on the shoreline there. So the trick with getting the waves in the water is less really is more. I've possibly put too much on there for my current liking, so I'm just going to take a wee bit off. I'm going to go with three. Now 
Now this water here, I want to put in a little bit. I want to make it slightly bigger, so it's more of an obvious river. And I'm going to put in a little bit of white in the centre. So I'm going to take my blue. I'm going to leave it one end coming out and flowing into the water. So it looks like the river is coming out and flowing into the sea and changing the direction slightly. A little bit bigger. There we go. Right, where are we at? Tiniest, tiniest white highlight right in the middle? Yeah, why not? So as I'm just felting along quite quietly just now, and not really got anything new to add to this. I will do a tiny bit of side promotion um, because I've, me and Judith, who's on just now, have been working on a lovely little fox design. So it's her design. I'm just doing the video editing and making the packages and sending them off. So she designed this wonderful fox called Foxy. And we worked together on a video the other week where we did a tutorial felt along for Foxy and that's got finished today. I've got the final touches still to do to it, which should be posted on here later tonight or tomorrow, depending on how late I can stay awake. So Foxy will be going live tonight or tomorrow morning. Some of you have got the kit already in the post. <laughs> arriving on your doors quite soon. So I think I'm very excited to let it go live. So I think I want more white, more contrast in the sea. I don't think the contrast was quite enough. So it is it can be quite a rough sea. I'm starting to get quite happy with that, I think. This, I'm missing out a big hunk of, a hunk of fibre. Let's put in a little dark brown there. And again with this bit, because I felt it's too linear, I'm going to pull it up, smoosh it about a bit and then put it back down again. And that just gives it a little bit more shape. are you doing? Again a little bit I think it definitely needs more dark just at that shoreline just to define where the water where the water goes to the land words working and around this bit as well I think needs a little bit more Just to give it an edge. And you so now I'm looking in the monitor to see how it is. 
I always recommend, I've said this before, I will say it again, stand up, walk away from it, turn it upside down, put it in a mirror, or look at it in a mirror, don't put it in the mirror. It's really good to look at it from different angles. Sometimes you can't see something that's missing until you've looked at it sideways twice. And again, pull it off. Oop. <laughs> Don't try and pull it off when your needles are stuck in <laughs> the felt. Give it a smoosh, see if there's any bits that are like this bit is trying to escape. See if anything's missing. Well, hey, excellent, Jennifer. I <laughs> knew you could do it. I've everybody it's ah uh, it's I'm always so happy when people don't think it's coming together and then suddenly it does it just comes together well <laughs> if your lines aren't necessarily straight the nice thing about this pre-felt is especially at this stage because you can wiggle it and straighten up any lines <laughs> like that because it will need a, a little bit more felting to get it all nice and secure but I'm fairly happy with how that's looking. I'm gonna go for another couple of minutes of felting. So in these last few minutes, while I'm just randomly stabbing, anybody have any questions, comments? How's everybody's going? Pop across to the Facebook group and give us a photo of your felt, because I do love, oh my God, I love seeing them so much. And if you've done one, anything that's been inspired by tonight as well put it up even if it's not exactly what I was doing so if you're doing something else but still felting along give us a photo anyway it really has hasn't it that is an error so we were we were a minute or two late starting so I'm going to give it another couple of minutes and I've put a little bit more brown, I'm just putting this dark brown everywhere, putting a little bit more brown, uh, light brown, sorry, in the forest area. Ooh, now Morgan. I do not know what that is, but I will Google it and see what we can do. I have, in theory, planned out these 12 months, but I am totally up for change. Depending on how difficult it is. So I always like, after I've belted for an hour or so, to just stop and come back the next day, two days later, with fresh eyes. Because there'll be bits that you'll look at tonight that you'll think, that was horrendous, I hate it. But with fresh eyes in the morning, you'll really love it. But there'll also be bits tonight that you think are wonderful. And you come and look at it in the morning and go, what was I thinking last night? Was I drunk? little bit yeah I can see how it can be slightly more difficult I like just making it smooshy um and letting the person's eyes fill in the rest and not getting too stuck down in particulars Maybe it's just because when I look at landscapes a lot of the time I don't have my glasses on so everything is kind of blurry anyway. But I think I'm going to pop that in the frame. Oh, Rona. 
I'm sure your hills are wonderful, but you can wiggle them around. So the secret with the hills is once you've got the base colour and the base shape, is you want to have really light bits on top so that you don't want to go too heavy. So you've got a little shadow on this side here of the darker colour, but the rest is just the tiniest amount of green and yellow, just hinting at what's there. And these back ones, you've got your dark brown shadowing either side, then going to light. And if they, I don't believe they are a disaster. If they are a disaster, you can pull them off and start again. Don't worry about that. You can see my hills here compared to these ones are quite different. What else have I changed? But yeah, you also want to have a little bit of variation in the top so they're not quite straight along. I haven't got much here, but you can make them quite varied. So hopefully that's answered your concern. But I think when you look at it tomorrow morning, you will think, actually, they're wonderful. Because I've seen your felting. OK, so let's put it in the frame. I'll get rid of you. The hardest part is getting the frame to line up. So you've opened it fully at the top. Whoop. I'm going to try and make it Am I happy with that? Oh, it needs to go around a wee bit Because it always seems to shift Too much There we go Secure it down so I like to have it so that it's bulging out slightly there and then tighten that up so it's really nice and tight at the top and it's not going to fall out so don't do it tonight once you've slept on it and you've worked on it a little bit more tomorrow then you can take some scissors and just chop all this excess off and it'll be nice and neat like this one around the back but my wonderful squishies I am so proud of all of you please 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 show me how you're doing in the Facebook group um, <laughs> this one is sticking up considerably I'm gonna try and get this straight move my table There you go. Oop. We have felted Ben the Calich from Ashig Beach. And I am so proud of all of you. I'm going to sign off now, but thank you for a wonderful fun hour. I hope yours are squishy and wonderful. And yeah, please, please send me what you've done. Have a wonderful night and happy felting.